querying a third party. Now that third party knows everything about your finances. Security is a gradient and nothing is absolutely perfect in the space. But if you're not leaking your address details, you're trying to be private about the addresses that you're monitoring, you use CoinJoin style solutions, privacy is an integral part of how we manage our money. Delighted to be here in Townsville, Australia at the Bitcoin Cash Conference in Bitcoin Cash City. And I'm with Josh Ellithorpe, who's a senior software engineer at Coinbase. Thanks so much for chatting with me. Oh man, I'm really happy to be here. It's been so much fun. It's been really fun. And I found your talk yesterday to be really interesting. You were talking about different types of wallets. Now, generally, when we talk about wallets, it's like custodial versus non-custodial. And people would think there were just two types. But when you talk about non-custodial wallets, there are all kinds of subtleties in yeah. there that people need to be aware of. In particular, ways that wallets can leak your information that people may not be aware of or different types of wallets that are able to be censored. Let's start off by talking about the ways that wallets can leak your information because that's a little bit scary to me. Oh, absolutely. And a lot of people aren't uh, really aware that wallets do leak your, your details. And the number one way that it leaks your details is by querying a third party about your address data. So all of a sudden you open up your wallet and it goes to some server and sends every address in your wallet to that server and says, tell me what the balance of all these addresses is. Well, now that third party knows everything about your finances. It knows every transaction that you've done in the wallet. It knows your balance and you've blown your privacy to that third party. So that third party could be your wallet uh, provider itself, the API servers that your uh, wallet provider is using. So if they're using a RESTful interface or some API driven interface, this is known as an RPC style wallet. And that RPC style wallet is going to just ask direct questions to a third party and it's going to get that information back and that's what powers your wallet. Now what's nice about those wallets is they're low bandwidth but it's low bandwidth because it doesn't have any privacy protection whatsoever and they're actually extremely easy to censor because that API server is just one API server or a load balance set of API servers. So someone could hijack the DNS and all of a sudden the wallet breaks. What do you mean by hijack the DNS? Just like a domain name can be seized, right? A government can seize a domain and make it so that it no longer goes to the IP address that was originally intended, which means now your wallet can't talk to that API server anymore. Effectively, you open the wallet and it can't do anything. Now you still have your own keys, so you didn't lose any money, but now you have an inconvenience of having to import your keys into another wallet, and it, it provides a way to turn that wallet off. And that doesn't make it very censorship resistant. Uh, it makes it so that any internet provider or any hop along the internet could actually censor the ability for your wallet to function which is not a situation that most people want. Obviously, it's important to keep in mind that this is orders of magnitude better than keeping your money in a bank account oh, where absolutely. it can be seized. Uh, but when we're talking about the crypto space in general, even though it is better, there are degrees of better within crypto. And it's important people realize that because we're making active choices as consumers all the time. Why not opt for the better types of wallets? Absolutely. So talk to me about some of the better options that are out there. So the way I look at it are the best wallets are the ones that can connect to the actual nodes on the crypto networks mm -hmm. because that is going to be the most uh, available services to power your wallet. And you actually mentioned yesterday the most private and secure wallet you can have is a full node. Uh, so this is going to make a lot of people happy, but this is just the facts of the situation. It is because you have the entire blockchain locally, so no one can tell what you're looking for in the blockchain. So you have access to your address data without telling a third party what addresses you care to look at. The problem with full nodes is they don't work very well on a mobile phone. They have very high resource requirements. And because of those high resource requirements, we have to look at better solutions for mobile mobile wallets. And that's when I look at SPV and neutrino based wallets as a better option. Okay, you're going to have to walk me through what is SPV stand for? What does does neutrino mean? Okay, so SPV is simple payment verification. It can connect to any full node on the network and it can determine, uh, it can query using what are called Bloom filters and say, hey, I'd like to know about this set of addresses. And generally your wallet will create a Bloom filter that is larger than the set of addresses you actually care about, which gives you some semblance of privacy. However, recent research in Bloom filters has shown that that doesn't give you a great privacy guarantee because as you generate new addresses, 
the Bloom filter that you require to include the new addresses as well will send that request and then the union of addresses between your previous Bloom filter and the new one that has the new addresses will start whittling down and be more accurate to the ad exact addresses you care about. So it actually leaks privacy over time. There's some great research papers around that. And in order to fix that problem, neutrino wallets were developed actually by the Lightning Labs team. And I actually greatly liked the work they did. And we've actually ported that over to BCHD and our neutrino wallet. And the way that that happens differently is instead of me constructing something on the client and sending a filter to the server and saying, hey, find me these things and get them back to me, which is not that private, it will create on the full nodes these little filters called Gollum filters. And what they do is it indicates what addresses actually were in those blocks. So when you open up your mobile phone, it streams these little filters to your phone. And you look at the filters and see if they match your addresses, AKA you do that locally. And then if one of those filters hits, it says, oh, well, I need that block. And it just downloads the full block. So now your anonymity set for the addresses you care about are every address in the entire block that you requested, which actually gives you a very good degree of privacy. Because there are a lot of addresses in there. Exactly, and you don't need to download the whole blockchain. It's far more lightweight than a full node. It still is more bandwidth intensive than your regular RPC wallet because you do need to download blocks that you care about. But it actually is quite performant on a 4G or these new next generation 5G networks where that network overhead really is minimal for modern uh, infrastructure. Now if you're in a place with poor internet or satellite internet, RPC style wallets may be a preferred choice. You may trade off that um, you know, privacy for convenience and speed and low bandwidth requirements. And a lot of those situations are lower monetary amounts and it's a little less important that they're completely private. What does your ideal wallet look like? So the ideal wallet, I think, is really pushing for neutrino-based wallets. I think they offer a good privacy guarantee, they're easy to use for new users, and they are a little bit more bleeding edge, but I think that that's the wave of the future for most of the you know, first world. And you also want to implement things like coin join solutions in your wallets, which allows you to obfuscate the chain of transactions. So you could think of it as, I go to a merchant and I buy goods. And I'm gonna get change back, and that change is identifiable. They know that's me, because I made a, a purchase with them. Now when I go to spend that change, or consolidate that change with other outputs in my wallet, now they can follow what my next transaction was or what my previous transaction was. And there's no reason we need to leak that information to a merchant because I want to buy a coffee or I want to buy lunch. So it's not about absolute privacy, it's about better than the status quo. So cash shuffles available on Bitcoin Cash. You've also got Wasabi Wallet, Samurai Wallet, they do this for Bitcoin, uh, for BTC. Wasabi Wallet, I'm a big fan. Uh, the developers there have actually been very positive about the work we've done on Cash Shuffle. I love the work that they're doing as well because they're pushing privacy forward and I think that privacy is an integral part of how we manage our money. Uh, just like I don't want to share my bank account information with everyone, but the reality is in the fiat world, you have to. Yeah. A lot of times, say that you're doing automatic bill pay. You can, they can pull funds to pay your rent or all of that, but you're giving them pull access yeah. to all your money. Yeah, that's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> so in the crypto world, it's, it's much better than that situation, and to, we can have better privacy, and I think that's really, really important yeah. moving forward. A lot of beginners ask me, what kind of a wallet should I be using? And personally, you know, I think custodial wallets are great for people just getting into the space because they may not have the security know-how to know how to protect themselves, store their private keys correctly. But maybe there are some easy examples out there that I don't know about that I could be directing people to or directing them uh, as the next step. You know, once they've learnt the ropes, where should they put their money next? Custodial wallets definitely have a place. Now, that is a bank. It is not... I don't like to call them wallets. They're custodial banks that give you access to send and receive funds easily. And we have to realize there are risks associated with that. 
There are, but there are also benefits. Some of those people might insure, insure your funds. Yeah, Coinbase has FDIC insurance up to a certain amount, which is very interesting and sort of an anomaly in the crypto space. Absolutely, and so they are trying their best to protect funds and secure your funds. Now, if you want to manage your own keys, I actually encourage everyone to manage their own keys, uh, but maybe, you know, for your grandma, it's a lot easier to set her up on Coinbase, you know? Uh, managing your own keys means having a secure place to put your seed phrase or your private key material, and some people just don't have a good way of doing that. Uh, it doesn't help for someone to install a non-custodial wallet and have a sticky note on their monitor that has their 12 words on it. This doesn't uh, help anybody, and that's the situation for some users. Now, there are easy to use uh, wallets like the Bitcoin.com wallet, Bread wallet. Uh, we actually, Chris Pacia from Open Bazaar and I work on Neutrino, which is the first Neutrino wallet for Bitcoin Cash. And you can actually get information about that at Neutrino.cash. We have a website. It also includes the white paper about why the Neutrino spec was developed uh, from Lightning Labs. And we link to that content because we really liked the work that they did in the space. And a lot of people think, you know, there's all this warfare in crypto. No, it's about the best solutions, the best technologies. And wh whoever is developing those, I'm going to be a fan. And I'm going to try to incorporate those to better people's lives and make it easier for them to, you know, work in a crypto economy. Absolutely. Well, I really appreciate your tips. I'm going to be looking into some of these wallets, definitely checking out like the cash shuffle features and uh, coin join on BTC side. These are really important second layer solutions, especially if you don't want to be putting money into privacy coins. If you are keeping your money in Bitcoin or Bitcoin cash, you should still be adding you know, second layer privacy solutions onto that. I completely agree. And with privacy coins, there's regulatory hurdles, which makes it more uh, difficult to exchange between privacy coins and your local local fiat. Yeah, and a lot of exchanges just don't even list privacy coins because the governments don't like them. I mean, they're a serious threat to governments. So I think that Cash Shuffle is a really good uh, mid-ground there. Well, I think it's one more layer than that. It's not just that it's a privacy coin. Privacy coins have one aspect that is very difficult for governments to be okay with, which is the lack of auditability on the chain. You can't tell if the supply was inflated, and you can't tell when the network has misbehaved because everything has been obfuscated. So it's actually riskier from a value proposition to customers because they don't have that auditability. So it's not just a fear of privacy. They want to know that the fun networks are functioning properly and that people are not losing value because of bugs in the system. So having a fully auditable chain like Bitcoin Cash or Bitcoin and then putting second layer privacy solutions, you can still see the amounts. You can still know that the chain is operating correctly and that's a lot easier for regulators to stomach. And also one thing people should keep in mind is that none of these are bulletproof. Don't presume that everything you're doing is completely secret. There are tools that governments have to be tracking things and I wouldn't presume that anything that I use in terms of like hardware wallets, you know, wallets on the internet, uh, cash shuffle features, I, mixing services, I, I just don't presume that any of them are completely bulletproof, but all of them help. And I encourage people to be looking into all of the privacy solutions that they can and be adding all of them, just add all of them solutions. I completely agree with that. It is, uh, security is a gradient mm -hmm. and nothing is absolutely perfect in the space. But if you're not leaking your address details, you're trying to be private about the addresses that you're monitoring, you use uh, coin join style solutions to try to obfuscate the chain of transactions, it leads to a private enough ecosystem that you're not leaking details to every merchant or every person that you're doing business with. And with uh, Solutions like Cash Shuffle and traditional coin join, you can still prove your chain of custody if you ever need to. So unlike a traditional uh, like custodial mixer where you lose custody of your funds and then they send you new funds, this isn't true with coin join solutions. It's a lot easier to show that monetary flow. Well, thank you so much for chatting with me here today. This has been great. Well, it was a pleasure and I'm glad you made it to the conference.